In the studio with me today is Amal Murad. Thanks so much for joining me. Thank you for having me. So you've earned the title as the first ever Emirati All-Ladies Parkour Trainer. Let's just start with what exactly is parkour? Firstly, that's too much hype for me, I feel. But Not at all. Well deserved. <laughs> Thank you very much. But parkour, if I have to technically kind of translate what parkour is, it's basically an art form or an art of movement where you go from point A to point B in the quickest and most efficient manner while overcoming obstacles. But through this journey, you realize the obstacles that are in front of you are mostly your mental obstacles more than the physical ones. And it's, it's really self-discovery, understanding the space that you're in and also using the space that you're in in order to reach a certain goal. Pretty much a cat woman. Literally. I'm going to sum it up like that. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's not a widely recognized sport though, so how did you come to learn about it and get involved with it? So, when I was a child, I always looked up to stunt doubles. I don't know why, I just loved stunt doubles. I loved seeing their work. Are you the next Bond, James Bond? <laughs> basically. <laughs> But I felt like because of that kind of influence, you know, Hollywood movies, I grew up watching a lot of like action movies, you know, Assassin's Creed, playing video games. Yeah, I'm kind of a nerd, but um, that I always felt like I wasn't able to do that. That was like just something I fantasized about, like, oh, my God, that's so cool. And most of the stunt doubles were parkour athletes, like their background was in parkour and Although it's such a new sport, you can see them having this freestyle kind of expression where they they kind of learn on the streets. You know, it's not really like, oh, I learned this at the gym. They're, they're the kinds of people who learn in the neighborhood. Well, that's the essence of it, isn't that it? That is it's, the essence. It's kind of a street or a sport that has evolved on the street. For sure. Where do you do it in Dubai? So as a child, I don't know, like, I feel like childhood has changed. The definition of childhood has changed now. But when I was a child, uh, we used to play in the neighborhood, like barefoot. Uh, that was not a problem. And I, I have scars to prove the things that we used to do as children. We used to climb things, walls, trees. And it w- we had that kind of spirit. You know, we mm. were all in the neighborhood and we were exploring the space that we're in, even if... Even though the space that we're in never changes, we find new things to do with the neighborhood that we're in. And I feel like that kind of got lost in trans. Like when we grew up, that just got lost, I feel. Because so it's always been a bug in you. You've always been very active, <laughs> uh, sure. explorative. You for wanted sure. to just get hands on and move your body. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and uh, that's like part of uh, also like my whole family kind of have a athletic background. Like my dad used to play volleyball. Mm-hmm. My sister was in the national basketball team. And I felt like that was just part of who we were uh, in terms of like if we were sad, we went out and played. But it was like, okay. Oh, I mean, it's a healthy lifestyle, yeah. isn't it? Instead of sitting indoors in front of a for screen sure. nowadays. For sure. So what made you take this next step to not only be training in the sport, but actually become a coach for parkour? Oh gosh, that's a very long story. I'm going to summarize it real quick. <laughs> but <laughs> it's, um, it's just being unhappy with where I was in life in terms of my job. So mm-hmm. I had a corporate job simple you know i i first worked in a semi-government uh, uh, entity which was like a five like let's say from eight to five but i stayed till nine like it was uh, that was my life i came back home and it was in Sharjah, and it's like until i come back home in dubai that's just it took too much out of my life um so i quit uh, that was my first job and anyone who tells you <laughs> if you quit your job I quit before a year so like even before my probation ended and everyone tells me that's like career suicide well when you know you know uh, yeah. at least you don't uh, mess around with making decisions exactly <laughs> but th- that's just how and then I ended up getting another job and even though there were shorter hours I was still unhappy mm-hmm. so it wasn't really about the hours it was what I was doing and that was when I was a push to like go back to my roots which is sports you know when I went back to being an athlete Mm. that is when I realized like there's so much to give in that field and that's when I'm really changing people's lives and in my job it was just like okay I need to make money that's about it yeah so a huge game changer combining passion with work is that not the dream that is the dream but people tend to forget that you don't get paid as much (laughs) like Uh, but but there has to be a compromise exactly I always tell people like that is your compromise but I would definitely you know compromise a little you know bucks for uh, for something that I love 
Agree. And I mean, I you could know. have the highest paying job. If you can't get out of bed to get yeah. there, what's the point? There is no point. We are live on Instagram, Dance FM UAE. This is Beats and Bloggers with Amal Murad. She is the first ever Emirati All Ladies Parkour Trainer. We'll be right back. Beats and Bloggers. Stay with Gemma as she gets the latest from the UAE's biggest influencers. We are back. Joining me is the first ever Emirati All Ladies Parkour Trainer, Amal Murad. So uh, the sport itself, it's completely freestyle. It's got me kind of flipping out though, because <laughs> for that reason, I guess there's no rule book. True. So how on earth as a coach do you train a student? Where do you start? I think the best thing about parkour is that it's freestyle because you get to really experience it in a way where you kind of find out what your strengths and weaknesses are without comparing yourself to other people. So you have, like for me as a coach, the the best and hardest part is that you have to unlock people's potential and you have to find ways to make them express themselves in ways they're comfortable doing so. So you're breaking, you're kind of pushing them outside their comfort zone, but at the same time you want them to be safe and you also want them to be open to expressing how they feel through movement. And you uh, make a very good point there. As you said, you've, you're unlocking something in them that maybe they are completely unaware for of. For sure, for sure. That makes an incredible coach. Uh, when you can see that in it. I'm hoping that's what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But what about, I'm talking in, you know, your um, your drills, your exercises. It's not like you jump in a pool, do 50 laps of freestyle. No. Where, what sort of uh, training do you do? Obviously, there's strength training. But when For you sure. actually start setting up the obstacles, you look at what you think they would excel in and then you challenge them in a different thing. Is that is that how it yeah. works? Like, I always tell my, my students is that, you have to work on strength, the boring part, which is strength and conditioning, because you'll get hurt if you're not, you know, able to carry yourself in a certain way. But at the same time, we work on skill. Mm-hmm. And skill for me is easier to learn than strength. Like strength takes time yep. and it takes kind of commitment. Of course. But with skill, it's more like it takes a day for you to get it. And then you're like, oh, OK, that's how it goes. And for me, I want people to have both mm. to kind of you know because I get bored for me as, even as a trainer I'm telling you if I'm only doing like oh push-ups pull-ups like no I, but as you say yes you know you can envision these grand skills if you don't have the body strength behind for it for sure you're going to fall flat on your face you know we all envision ourselves as James Bond jumping <laughs> you know <laughs> leaping sure. here across buildings but yes you can achieve it but you need to do the hard work so it's for sort of sure. you know give and take isn't yeah. it and it is not just that you have to kind of understand what each and every individual's fears are so every person has a different fear like i had a girl who was like uh i'm scared of heights i was like are you scared of heights or are you scared of falling so there are two different things Mm. because if you're scared of falling then i can help you because i can teach you how to fall without getting hurt so i actually kind of push her to fall because we're too scared to fall as a child i fell too many times and my mom ha- can testify to that and You're i have fearless. scars like well fearless is that like reckless kind of as a child but so i felt like we're scared we're too scared to fall now and it's and i feel like that's why we get injured because we we're, we cringe up we don't want to fall and that's what causes the injury and amal what would you say then is your personal um meaning behind parkour what's the essence to you about the sport for me personally it would be self-discovery it's understanding who you are and understanding what your limitations are and working towards pushing that limit because um, the reason why I pursued parkour so aggressively and I wanted it so badly for women especially to teach women is because it taught me a lot about myself I'm very very indecisive like and with parkour you don't have that chance you don't have that opportunity you have to commit 100 percent when you choose to do any kind of move um i mean as you just touched on it's more than just the physical benefits that your students uh, reap so you're saying there's a lot um of growth personal growth it's almost it's it's sport and therapy which they say you know being active is so healthy for you so (laughs) that's something that you endorse yeah, and, and not just that, because sports, uh, for me, when I when I first started wanting to be a coach, everything was about the aesthetics. It's about how your body looked like. It's about, like, uh, even performance, like how fast can you go or how far you can go. It was never about the individual mm. or, or, like... And it, it actually is the reason why it kind of discouraged me to train because I was like, I don't want to keep, you know, picking at my own body, finding faults and flaws. So, But with parkour, it's like, oh, I can I can figure out, I can do this. 
Yeah, like, uh, there's it's a chance for me to learn. Yeah, growing and developing for sure. as a person. Then I don't know. I, sure. I look great in these gym ties. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and that's the issue. Like once you start uh, understanding that you're capable of anything. And that's when you start appreciating what your body is capable of rather than what it looks like. And I feel like that is where things are missing in the fitness realm. Everyone cares too much about how you look like and the abs or whatever it is. How to get abs in 10 days. For me, it's like uh, how to climb that mountain and, and be able to get down safely. You know, uh, like Yes, inspiring. Now, you just touched on briefly before you did switch from working as a graphic designer in the court and even working in corporate. And now you're pursuing a career as a full full-time parkour coach and trainer and uh, athlete yourself. So as we hear, you're very passionate about for you. But what are you hoping to achieve as the first ever Emirati ladies-only uh, parkour coach? Uh, such a loaded question. <laughs> no, but uh, it would definitely be, for me personally, the reason why I chose to pursue this is to show women that they can have a career in the fitness realm, especially locals. Um, I feel like we tend to think that it's not something that we can pursue or it's not a way to make a living. We always think about like desk jobs, become a manager, become... So the way that we're programmed, even in schools, like no one ever tells you, oh, do you want to be a trainer when you grow up? <laughs> it was never a thing. Mm. Um, for me, I wa- yeah, I wanted, I wanted to open doors and opportunities where women can find ways to to actually make change or create change in whatever field they choose whether it be music sports like something that's not conventional um and and just show them that it's possible um, well incredible yeah, honestly uh, it's been a privilege you. and you know here you are pioneering parkour here in the emirates congratulations thank to you thank you so much for having me thank you you can catch our full beats and bloggers interview at dancefm.com alex adair make me feel better on dancefm <laughs>